You're listening to The Real Short Box, a comic book podcast made for geeks by geeks. Hello, everybody, and thank you for coming out in podcast land here and listening to The Real Short Box. My name is Donald. My name is Jared. I kill fools. I'm the fool killer. And my name is Supreme Chancellor Kevin. Oh, Kevin, you're on here now. Oh, wait, wait, wait. A... Are, are, are the three originals all back? I Apparently so. so. Wait, wait, Apparently wait. Apparently so. For, uh, the boys are back in town. The boys are back in town. <laughs> the boys are back. The boys are back. But <laughs> we're in different towns. But in hey, California. Jared. Yeah. Hey, Jared, you realize something, right? What's that? It has been, I kid you not, 33 months since all three of us have recorded a pod together. Holy shit. Wow. I mean, I'm not I'm not I'm not I'm not even gonna count like when you called in on, on a couple of pods. I mean like just the three of us straight up doing something. Wow. It's been 33 months. Wow, wow, because that means that the boys are back in town. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Well, since the boys are back, let's uh, let's talk about uh, some some other boys. We're we're actually going to be talking a little bit about uh, some uh, some Soviets, some Russian spies, maybe, and some. Uh, yeah, everybody some loves the Russians feet. these days. Yeah, definitely. And uh, <laughs> are, there, are, are they commies? Cool. Uh, at this point, I think they were commies. Yeah. Yeah. yeah or or, sure. or the former Soviet Russia, right? Yeah. Yeah. So we're going to be, I think we're going to yes. be talking a little bit about the Red Guardian and then the Soviet uh, super soldiers. Um, mm-hmm. But we wanted to talk a little bit about kind of where we're at. That's right. And we're so, all Skyping to do this video call, this audio call. That's and, right. Yeah. I mean, that's because uh, we can leave our homes, but we are not doing, we're just, I don't know, I'm a little lazy, so I'm just going to stay here. That's right. We're social distancing podcasting. Which, right. Donald, we were already doing that, but now Kevin has joined into the fun. Um, yes. So, wow. Yeah, this is, hopefully this is not the future. <laughs> hopefully one day um, this pandemic uh, social distancing thing will uh, end and we can all, you know, go back to somewhat of a normal existence. But until yes, then... Indeed. You know, aside from people, you know, being very sick and dying, we're also dealing with uh, entertainment being postponed, being shut down. And one of those biggest ones was uh, the debut of the Black Widow movie, right? Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, that's how far has that been pushed back? As they have they said? Uh, I believe it's November, but let me check just to, to confirm. And it sounds it, right. It was originally this month? No, no it was May. May. It's gonna be May. Okay. Yeah, they had such little hope <laughs> in this being done that they were like, let's just delay it. Well, yeah, they have well, to because the movie theaters aren't opening up until like at, at best late May. And there well, were rumors, there were rumors that they were going to possibly re- just release it on like Disney Plus. Nah. Uh, or for nah. pay, but I, I don't think they'll go that route and I don't think that would be a smart move. Nope, there's a lot of money invested. They're not going to do that. No, and like, like I was saying, the interesting thing is like I, I collect, um, I'll say this off air, I collect Marvel Legends figures, and they were just because, you know, to get hype for the movie, they started releasing, like, I don't know if you got, went to Target before, you know, toilet paper was uh, gold. Uh, they were releasing, starting to release product. Like they had a, I saw a Taskmaster movie version mask, and they were starting to release the Marvel Legends uh, series that was mostly movie inspired figures. And they kind of, what I heard is Hasbro just ceased releasing it. So some stuff has hit stores and then it's not, they're probably not going to start pushing it out until the movie is back on track to be released. Hmm. So it's interesting to see the effects of, uh, you know, merchandise uh, entertainment and, and how it's affecting, you know, obviously we're, we're here talking about Black Widow and all that, but this specific film, uh, cause I think people were just actually starting to get really hyped for it. Yeah. Especially when we saw your boy, the taskmaster in the trailer, I said, Oh um, my goodness. Well, yeah. I'm so happy that. I... 
And that other pod, what was the guy who was the Hawkeye's double or something like that was saying, you know, he didn't want to spoil anything, but Taskmaster was going to be the guy to watch, like the new villain. Yeah. Yeah. Pete. Yeah. Pete. Pete. Pete yeah. Pete told us that he, he was very excited for the character. Yeah, he was excited. Uh, he was excited in general. I think he, we had to have him uh, stand off stage for a few minutes to calm himself down. He was just too excited. And his pants, That's too, true. which was awkward. We just, you know, you can't have one video. If yeah, every time he said Taskmaster, he kind of hunched over. Did you notice that? I did. Yes. <laughs> I completely noticed that. That's why I pulled him off a little bit, like off the side. I was like, man, you got to calm down. I'm like, this is getting ridiculous. You're making <laughs> everybody on. Well, Donald, you and I and and the three of us have discussed Taskmaster at length. We even did that character uh, spotlight on him. But today we're doing another guy, like we're talking about the Red Guardian. Now, I, if I'm to understand, Donald, you have five fun facts about the Red Guardian. Kevin, did you just fall down or? I didn't do anything, brother. I'm silent. No. You didn't I'm do anything. anything. I'm like serious. You're I'm not falling down the stairs. <laughs> I'm like, I, I can't, I, dude, dude, I'm not moving a muscle. I'm just pulling the laptop. I'm not doing anything. Ah, all right. All right. Maybe, maybe, maybe you got a YouTube video playing in the background. I don't know. It sounds like somebody fell down the stairs. Mm, that's weird. <laughs> We're getting sound effects added to this podcast, which is fine. You know, it makes it exciting. It's exciting. We're being True. attacked. Right. Oh, here we go. Ready? Oh. <laughs> red, red Dawn. It's like Red Dawn, huh? Ow, my back. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> wait, wait, real quick, real quick segue though. So you just yeah. said Red Dawn. Now, at one point in my life, you know, we watched that movie as we were young, young kids, and you know, we're like, oh, that'd be crazy if like the Russians just flew in and started shooting people. The way the world mm-hmm. has been going lately, I'm like, that sounds normal. <laughs> like now, I'm like, no, the whole world is on shutdown. I would not be surprised if I saw Russians parachuting down and then like started to shoot my teachers and stuff. There you go. Right now, we're in the 1995 movie Outbreak, minus the monkey. I know. I know. If we could only find that fucking monkey. Oh, it's, it's out there somewhere. Got but back to... Bubble. Speaking of red baboon asses, back to the Red Guardian. Um, yeah. What you, now, Donald, you said you, had, you found five fun facts or interesting facts about the Red yeah, Guardian. Yeah, it's like... It's, I think it's... Five or six, maybe seven. I don't know. I'm just gonna uh, spew them off here as as uh, as we go down the line. If you guys want to comment, chime in. Feel free to do yeah. so. Um, so he uh, appeared in Marvel Comics. Uh, his first appearance was uh, the uh, Avengers number forty three back in nineteen sixty seven. Yep, right um, on the cover. Alexei Shostakov. 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 Uh, he was the first Red Guardian. Uh, very cool cover. Um, it looks like Captain like, America, but like the Russian version. Right. Which is all exactly what he was, yeah. Red with this Russian star on his chest and, and looking all intimidating and shit. So it looked really cool when it came out in, in, in 1967. It's a cool cover and a cool book. Um, the um, He... Which it'll make sense since we just mentioned it, but uh, he also lived in the World War II era, which is uh, uh, he was as a child, he lived as an orphan during World War II and he was rescued and raised by Vasily Karapov, a soldier, a Soviet soldier who eventually led the Winter Soldier program. Yeah, yeah, so Alexei was raised by Karpov and treated like his own son, and that's how he was able to um, get involved in the super soldier program. Uh, when Which he makes was you think, I wonder. I wonder if they're going to add that into the movie because that could totally. Oh, they totally might. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, when he was old enough, he became a pilot for the Soviet Union, and his career sped up and uh, became one of the best pilots owned by the Soviet Union. His ability to fly a plane is excellent, and sometimes he would be involved in some of the secret missions that they would have. So it was really building towards him being something special. Um. In the comic, Red Guardian's strength is often compared to Captain America because he also went through a super soldier program. Uh, he's actually, in fact, stronger than Captain America because oh, unlike yeah? Steve Rogers, who gained his power by getting injected by super soldier serum, Alexei was instead, he gained his power from the physical strength that he has. He never got a serum or any kind of power to get stronger. During his time as a super soldier or in the Soviet Union, 
He trained uh, in many kinds of martial arts and learned how to use various kinds of weapons, one of which is a shield similar to that of Captain America's. But his shield, it's kind of, it's kind of a cheat. It's like, you know, like the yo-yos, um, like a real yo-yo, you know, you gotta, if, you, if you screw up, you got to roll it back on the string. Yeah. But then there was those yo-yos that you just put in and automatically zips back up. Yeah. Yeah. His, his is like that cheat version. His is magnetic. So when he throws it, it magnetically comes back to him. He's got like a magnet that takes it back. Whereas Captain America has to use skill and American uh, 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 ingenuity. The guy's got to figure out things. It's, it's all uh, good old American know-how. Yeah. yeah. But then it'll break down in two years. <laughs> the American way. Yeah. <laughs> no. he, now, here's a weird one. He used to be in a relationship with Natasha Romanoff, a.k.a. Oh. Black. <laughs> Was it, wasn't he her uh, her like, ex-husband, I think? Yeah, during his time as a Soviet Union pilot, Alexei was married to a ballerina named Natalina Alanova Romanova, or known as the Black Widow. Right. Uh, the relationship, of course, didn't work well. Both separated when Alexei was appointed by the KGB to carry out a secret mission that made them separated forever. Well, and they, he, he faked his death so, so he could become yeah. the Red Guardian. Yeah, and he's a and, and didn't he eventually become like Ronin, like the current Ronin or something that like that? That is a different ver that's the thing I gotta say about Red Guardian in doing the research. There has been like five Red Guardians. There's even a Golden Age version that first appeared in like a Submariner book. Uh yeah, I'm familiar yeah. With, yeah. I'm familiar with the two, which is the one we're talking about now, and then there was another one which we'll go into who was it? Who came up in the like the late eighties, nineties, in Captain America again? Well, well, let's talk for a second about that Golden Age one. Um, what was what was his name? Uh, his name, let's see here, was Alexei Lebedev, and I'm fifty percent Russian, but I'm probably saying that wrong. Uh, yeah, he was the Golden Age version of Red Guardian who first appeared in Namor, the Submariner Annual Number One. So this was a retcon guy because that was in June nineteen ninety one. So this was like. Later oh. on, they created this guy. So oh, the okay. I mean, the first first one is the Alexei uh, Shostakov, but this was Got one it. they created uh, probably for like looks like yeah, like an invader story or something like that. That's a bullshit cheat if I've ever heard one. Yeah, exactly. Uh, he was later apparently killed during the purges of the 1950s, opposing the brutal experiments that would later create his successor. So they tried to just kind of tie him in, kind of weak, weak sauce. Yeah. No need, but okay, whatever. Whatever, now, Golden Age version. Now, we've all seen, I think we've all seen, I have, the, the three trailers they've released for Black Widow, and they are insinuating that they were all family. Now, I don't know if that was just all they trained in the Red Room, or if it's like that they're going to do the, you know, she was married to him. I don't think they are, just because David Harbour and Scarlett Johansson don't look like a couple, <laughs> you know, in, in that sense. But, uh yeah. You never know. But there is something in the trailer where he goes like, oh, finally all family is here together again or something like that. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. And he was so excited about it. And it makes sense now because when I was watching Stranger Things, he was quite chubby in that last season. And I was like, Jesus, he's kind of letting himself go a little bit. And it seems that he must have done that for the role in the Black Widow movie. Well, he saw what, Hel what getting in shape did for Hellboy. <laughs> it's like, oh, nobody... Nobody sees that movie. Shit, I'm yeah. just going to eat Twinkies. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to eat Twinkies and be the Red Guardian. It looks like, I hope they kind of make him cool, because it looks kind of like he's comic relief almost, but, you know, uh, I don't know. Like, it looks yeah. like he's like he's, ha he's had his day already, and now he's kind of like trying to squeeze back into the, to the tights. I would hey, Donald, or, or... go ahead. Are, are you upset about another person playing another comic book character, or are you are you cool with this? Another person playing another comic book character? What do you mean? Somebody play, that played Hellboy playing another comic book character? Yeah. Oh, so I'm fine with that because it's not DC and Marvel. You know, True. it that doesn't bother me nearly as much as, as if they keep moving over from DC to Marvel and Marvel to DC and back and forth and back and forth. It's like, who are you? You know, which mm -hmm. character are you? And if Henry Cavill decides to play a Marvel character, I'm just going to flip my table. Christian Bale is. Christian Bale is. You have a problem with that, too? Uh, 
I, mean, I think in there's a way, been enough yes. time. Yeah. In a, in a way, it's a little bit annoying. Right. But Jared, I want you to Jared, I want you to play Beta Ray Bill though when when they get to him. Oh, I'd I'd love to play Beta Ray Bill. I of course just have to do the voice. But I think uh, it's too late. I think they've probably already cast him or they're already working on it. Oh. I think if you did play Beta Ray Bill though, you should use the Bane voice. <laughs> oh, Beta Ray Bill. Like, what? I don't know. What? Is Tom Hardy doing Beta Ray Bill? What? If, if you're not watching that Harley cartoon, the Harley Quinn cartoon, oh my god. Bane is good. hilarious in it. Bane is like the best. Yeah, I, I love to see that. I heard it's really good. Love, it's made Bane fun for me. Kite Man is freaking hilarious. How's Dr. Psycho in it? Don't they do him too? Oh, oh Dr. Psycho, he can't stop saying cunt. So he can't. Are you serious? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my god, I didn't know it was, was rated R R. Wow. It is a hard R, dude. They say fuck and shit and everything. Oh man, I gotta find a way to watch that. Okay. Yep. Not with the kids. <laughs> There's a lot of beheading well, and shit like that. No, no, he can, he can watch it with his son. His son won't understand what's going on. Well, that's no, true. that's true. I could. Uh, although that would be a big backfire if my like ten month old kid is like. First word is cunt. <laughs> that would that would not be good. We're like mama, dad, dad, cunt. Uh, Especially if if your wife was cunt. holding him time. Oh God, you were being River. So why are you being so rude? Cunt. Ah. That would be your your ex wife is what I meant to say. Yeah, it would be my ex. <laughs> well, actually, I have a worse case scenario. Just have him say that to his grandma. Oh, well, funny Aww. enough, my, 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 my middle daughter, uh, Stella, no, no, Stella said fuck for fork. So we did have that. So she'd be like, ah, fuck. Uh, and then my, uh, oldest Madeline said cock instead of clock. And oh, that Lord. backfired when we went into a restaurant that we thought it would be cool to have like several clocks all over the wall. And she just kept pointing and going, cock, cock, cock. Oh boy. Oh boy. <laughs> But you know what? It's okay because they might have thought she was talking about like like you know the crow that 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 that, that the cock the crows or something like that. In the That's, morning. Right. That's right. That's yeah, right. Cock a doodle sure. do. Sure, Kevin. Keep keep dreaming on that one. So do we have? <laughs> spe speaking of wholesome fun, do we have any more fun facts about Red Guardian about this guy, Alexis Alexi Shostakov? Oh, just that uh, David Habor is uh, is playing him, and that uh, he had previously played Hellboy and been in the Stranger Things series. And did some weird Dr. Uh, Frankenstein or, or what was oh, it? Yeah. It was, uh, it was on uh, Netflix, right? Echo and Hyde or some weird shit he did that was like 20 minutes long and was just so dumb I couldn't watch it. Yeah, I, I went from was... loving him. I really I loved him in Stranger Things this first season. And then I felt like that character just became like one note. Like yeah. he, just, he just was like the irritated cop. And I was like, eh... I don't want to watch. I feel like I'm watching my dad get angry at me all the time. Yeah, yeah. yeah season yeah. two, they really made him kind of, kind of a villain in a way because he just kept arguing with uh, Eleven, and yeah, it just it just didn't work. It gets better in season three though, if you haven't seen that. It, no, three, three was yeah, three was good. He gets better there, and then season four, obviously, he's in that. We saw a teaser trailer. So yeah, where he's in Russia or picks something like back that. up. Yeah, yeah, yeah he's in Russia on like some chain gainer. Or something. Uh, been there. Not a gang bang, Kevin. A chain no. gang. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, are are you know? I'll ask you guys. Are you excited to see Red Guardian? Was he a character you were clamoring for? <laughs> no. Uh, a little bit. Taskmaster, though, I am clamoring for that. Taskmaster. And they better not great. kill him off either. They better not kill him off. He better not be a one shot villain. He better be around for a couple of movies. I hope they don't kill him off, and I hope. Like, they just keep it, like, how it is. Like, it looked like that's the smartest thing for a character like Taskmaster. Get somebody in a suit who can move and do cool shit and let him do cool shit. Don't mm. worry about, like, getting the right actor for that part. Like, you just want to see them, like, be badass. Right. And he also could be used as a henchman for other big, big line villains, like, say, like, a Doctor Doom coming up in the future. Well, yeah. what I'm wondering is, speaking of, like, henchmen, is... We saw uh, 
that one character uh, uh, from the Captain America films become Crossbones mm-hmm. uh, later on. Mm-hmm. I'm wondering if they'll do a young a, a younger version of of him as Crossbones in this one because that. Mm. And the reason I say that is because in the Marvel Legends series, with the movie line figures, they released another Crossbones figure. So I thought that was kind of interesting. Hmm. Interesting. Are you are you moving your laptop around or? No. Oh. You're not moving anything. I'm sir. I'm, I'm like I'm as silent as a or I'm I'm like doing anything. I'm just standing. I'm sitting still. Weirdest thing, because on my end, it just sounds like you're gyrating with your laptop. <laughs> I, I hear it too. I hear it too. That's yeah. weird. I'm not doing any Elvis Presley moves, you know. I'm just sitting here, just silently and steady. Don't stop touching yourself, and stop. I'm not touching, touching myself. No, okay. I'm not touching. <laughs> oh, we're not supposed to be doing that. Fuck. Yeah. Well, well, you can, Jarrett, because you're in a car, so you're allowed. Oh, sweet. That's sweet. I believe as long as Jared, you're on you're a car the street, you can. Yeah, I'm in a car. It's soundproof. It's nice. <laughs> it's kid proof too. They try and get. Oh my god! Yeah, take off. He's got his kids. They're like, (laughs) just went out for smokes. Wow. Yeah. So now, do speaking of uh, our Soviet friends, they are. It does does seem like they're doing the team thing. They've got the other Black Widow. They've got the Red Guardian. Are we gonna? Do you think we'll see any Soviet super soldiers? I mean, that's kind of what they're doing. But like, do you think we'll see Omega Red? Ones? Would that be something? If they put an Omega Red in there somewhere, that'd be the shit. I highly doubt it because I think they're still worried about, uh, not worried, but holding their their cards. I know you cream your pants if they did. I know you cream your pants if they did. Jim. Well, you know who I'd cream my pants if they did, and I know they won't because it would be too hard to hide it. If they did Ursa Major, who was a member of the Soviet super soldiers, who could turn into a big bear. Hmm. If, if they did that character, I'd be like, oh, shit. Like, they're really going for it. Hmm. Yeah, that'd be pretty cool. If you saw Ursa Major, even Vanguard or Dark Star, to be honest, would be cool. I'd like to yeah. see those guys. And, yeah, uh, you know, Omega Red would be awesome. But, I, again... I, I think that they're not going to tie in the X Men world yet. We need right. We need something. We need Doctor bigger, Strange. We need a Doctor Strange movie to do that. Right. The mul- multiverse of madness or whatever it was. I think that's where we're going to see that. And, mm. and we've got now. We've got uh, who's attached to that to direct? Oh, uh, so, the, the your your boy Sam Raimi. Now I hear. Yep. Is he attached? Or I know he was. He was in the. He was like the guy they were maybe going to go to. I think I think he's on board now. I'm not 100%, but I'm pretty sure he's on board. And he is the perfect replacement, too. Let's, let's be honest. What else is he doing? Yeah. He ain't doing Evil Dead 4? I don't know. Evil Dead 4 Come movie? Come on, Sam. Get it going. Get it going. <laughs> he it'd, be cool yeah, to see, it'd be cool to see the Crimson Dynamo, um, Titanium Man, you know, a few other guys step in there, which is maybe why we see Tony Stark in... In this uh, in this movie, because uh, Robert Downey Jr. is listed in the credits for the film, mm-hmm. oh, so yeah. he's going to make an appearance at some point. Yeah, and if well, I, I don't know if this movie takes place in the past. If it does, you know, I think I think I think from what I hear, it takes place like in between Civil War and, and Infinity War, apparently, or at least a good chunk of it does. Yeah, because uh, he, cause they they're going on some reference that like Hawkeye or somebody says of like remember that time it's supposed to be like this is that time uh, for one of the movies oh, but uh, <laughs> Crimson Dynamo is a possibility because once again going by the toy line um, with Marvel Legends they do a thing called a build a figure so like each figure comes with a piece of like a bigger figure yeah and the bigger figure is Crimson Dynamo and it uh-huh. doesn't look like a comic version so I would not be surprised that that's like the villain behind you know or like the ultimate weapon but you know taskmaster is like the the guy who's like you know goes out in the field and gets shit done but then you know at the end they fight the crimson dynamo yeah i know what i think you might be onto something jared that might be the case maybe taskmaster isn't like the main villain they may have to like take on an actual another force in the background yeah it's quite possible 
What mm-hmm. I'm hoping is is that they're building the Red Guardian up to to basically it seems like to die. You know what I mean? Like make a sacrifice. He was so strong. He, yeah, and he had such a good history. And, and it's particularly if they go the romance route, then he's a dead man. <laughs> yeah. You know, there's there's no other way around it. He's gonna he's gonna kick it. But uh, uh, hopefully that's not the case because I do like David, and I I do like the idea of the character. So I would like to see him around a little bit more. And I think that, that Marvel, hopefully they're smart enough to to continue to build and enrich even for the Disney Plus. Because having a you know him as part of a team possibly uh, on a Disney Plus series would be a lot of fun. Uh, just, yeah. Just my thought there. Yeah, but, and I'm interested because uh, it seems like they can have a lot of fun with this one because it's a prequel of sorts, you know. Mm-hmm. So they they can set up stuff like you're saying, like with these characters that we haven't seen and then we get to see them in a Disney plus show, say down the line and like what they're doing, you know, like Falcon and the winter soldier completely. Yeah. Yeah. There's, there was, I think there were six of these guys. Yeah. In total six or seven, seven Uh, of red guardians. Yeah. That's yeah. There was, there was after Alexi, there was a, a woman, a female one, Dr. Tanya Belinsky. She was in like some mm-hmm. old defender. She was created by my man Steve Gerber and Sal Buscema. And uh, then there was Joseph. Is Joseph Peckett? Yeah, he's the one who I think I remember as a kid because he was in the. He was the one who was with the Soviet super soldiers and like the Captain America books and stuff. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's the guy and, I remember. I I remember him pretty well. Yeah. Then apparently after that there was Krasno Kranitsky, somebody mm-hmm. named Anton, somebody named Nikolai Anton. Kralenko. Jesus Christ. Yep. Yep. And you know who the eighth Red Guardian is going to be, right? Who's that? Jared Galante. That's true. I could do it, you know? I could. I don't speak Nikolai Russian, but was, I, I look Russian. This doesn't mm. make sense. Nikolai was also known as Vanguard and the seventh Red Guardian. That's just stupid. Yeah. And he led the Winter yeah. Guard. That guy's just well, being greedy. what the Soviet super soldiers became. They became the Winter Guard, because I guess that right. sounded cooler. So you know what? You need to have a summer guard to counteract that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So we basically, I mean, uh, we're going to talk about, like, none of the Red Guardian's various identity users have been revealed to possess superhuman powers or abilities. So none of them have superhuman power or abilities, but they were all under, like, some type of super soldier program or something, but not with injections, which is yeah, weird. I think they were just like super super agents kind of thing but yeah i don't i don't think any of them from what i remember had any like significant powers or whatever so it's, it's like russian batmans with shields running around or, or russian james bonds yeah exactly. well, actually it's funny you mention that because hmm. uh uh the uh, krasno gridinsky the the fifth red guardian Mm-hmm. He was named after uh, a James Bond no- no- <laughs> novel, really? Russia with Love. Oh my goodness! Uh, Look at that connection. The Russian Look at that connection. name of the assassin, Donovan Red Grant. <laughs> oh yeah, awesome. I remember that character. Mm-hmm. Yep. So that's that's a little fun fact there. Um. So they none of them had any powers. Now, as far as this Soviet uh, uh Soviet super soldier team. They did have a special back in 1992. They had a number one issue. And, it was and I really don't know. good. I read was it. Was it? Yeah, huh. it was really cool because it was like, I was always obsessed with like the the kind of uh, dark horse characters, like, you know, that never got their due or whatever. And they did it. It was like a, like, a, like a deluxe book. It was really big. And it had like every Russian superhero and ones they created for that book. Um and just told a really cool story. I mean, I couldn't like tell you verbatim what it was, but like it was pretty badass. Like I remember just like really digging it because it was like, oh yeah, like I'd like to know more about these characters. And from yeah. what I remember, there was like a, a, a two factions kind of fighting each other, like ones that were working for the government still, and then like another like the ones who defected. Yeah, because the three there was three mutants. It was Vanguard, uh, Darkstar, and Ursa Major. Uh, they decided later to sever ties with the Soviet government, and they went to yeah. Avenger Island, and they asked Captain America to help them seek political asylum. But then they were they were basically captured, beaten nearly to death, and then taken back to the Soviet states by the uh, the new government sponsored Supreme Soviets, who uh, teamed up with the Crimson Dynamo. Yeah, 
And I think, too, later, I think in an X-book, uh, Darkstar was killed. And which was kind of a waste because she was kind of a cool character. Her, her and her, bro- uh, her brother was Vanguard. She had powers like where she could kind of control like the dark force, kind of like what Cloak uses and some other characters use. Uh, but uh-huh. she, she was a mutant. But her brother had the weirdest power, Vanguard. His power was if he crossed his arms and he would have the hammer and the sickle because Russia. Duh. But if he crossed his arms, he could deflect anything. Oh, <laughs> so weird. It's kind of cool. And then kind of like, you're kind of only a defensive character, like so. You can, oh, yeah. you know, I mean, what you can Craven? start a fight, but yeah. What about Craven the Hunter? I forgot he's oh. a Russian. He is Russian, yeah. Who's, yeah, but there's, there's no, no way trivia. they're gonna put him in this. Spider, yeah, he's a Spider-Man character. That's true. Here's some trivia yeah. for he, you, he, though, Kevin. Who yo. is Craven the Hunter's brother? Hmm. Craven the Hunter's brother. Oh, Craven uh, Moorhead, I believe, was his last name. <laughs> Huge <laughs> Spider-Man villain. <sighs> I gotta think about this. Craven's brother. Ooh, shame yes, on it me. Was, it was Take, revealed yeah. like later on, but but it, it's been it's been in the in the mythos for a while now. I'm I'm gonna take a guess because I don't know. I'm gonna say Chameleon. Boom! Right off the bat, got it. Wow. Really? Yep. Wow. And, Look at and me. they did, uh, if you're reading Nick Spencer's uh, uh, Spider-Man run, which is so good, uh, hmm. he he does, uh, they had a really good Craven story, and at the end, Chameleon's like, I'm going to get you back for fucking with my brother. So it's pretty cool. Huh. Yeah. Cool. I always, like the, I always love the Chameleon, love Craven, so yeah, it's cool. Yeah. Yeah, those are the two great characters. I love the chameleon. He's he's one of my faves too. And Craven's awesome. He's just psychotic. He's great. I'd like to see Craven uh fight uh um Biwana Beast from DC Comics. Ooh, that'd be a good uh, uh a good uh smackdown. I think I think we might have to do that sometime soon. That might be my Wanna future. Wanna Beast versus Craven the Hunter. That's a good one. Yeah. Yeah, I think we're teasing something that might be coming. I don't know. That'd don't be like know. the ultimate hunt for him, too, because that guy's like every animal kind of thing, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I've I've, I've always wanted to pit uh, What's-Her-Face. She's like poor man's animal man. Um, she's in the Justice League. Vixen? Oh, yeah. Vixen. Yeah, with the, with the totem. Yeah, I've always wanted to have Vixen fight uh, Animal Man and see, but I, I, I already know in my head who would win. It easily would be Animal Man. Yeah. If you could, if you can give, if you can give Craven one of those uh, lantern rings, which one would you give him? Which color ring? Red. Yeah, he's uh, red. for rage. You yeah. part of the red yeah, lantern. Yeah, red for rage or yellow for fear, because he can install great fear in people when he's hunting them. You know what? Craven would make a good member of the Sinestro Corps for sure. Yeah, yeah. DC eventually sells to Marvel, like everybody thinks will happen, and uh, we might have that. I hope to mm. God that doesn't happen. Same that, here. That, that, it, it'd be worse than WCW getting bought by WWF back in the day. Yeah, like I know his kids were like, "I want all my toys in the same toy box," and Marvel has been kind of doing that, but I think they need to slow their roll now. That would be way too. I would be like, "No, nah. too much power. It's a monopoly. Too Can't much. Have it. Yeah. yeah, too much." So, any more on these uh, Russian, any cool Russian superheroes, any Russian, you know, we'll just make this a Russian episode. We could just <laughs> talk about Russian people. They Anybody got any cool Putin stories? Putin I, on heard that you, I, I heard that you're like his third cousin, uh, apparently. I could be. I definitely could be. He was just Putin us on. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Uh, yeah, there's, uh, there's, a car, there's, a there's a character called the Red Ghost, Ivan Kragoff. Oh, the the Fantastic Four villain, right? Yep. Yeah, he was uh, weird. He had like the apes. He had his like like his primate friends, and then mm-hmm. he could become like intangible. That was he was a really weird character, but cool. That is definitely. weird. That is weird. Well, I think that's uh, that's gonna pretty much be it for us. Yeah, I think we've uh, we've covered it pretty well. Um, I think, though, that uh, if you do, uh, you know, if you are interested in our podcast and you want to listen to some of our past ones, we've got a huge library. We've got over, what, 100, at least 130, 140 episodes that you can check, check. out. 
uh, on YouTube right. and iTunes and all that. We're on Instagram and Facebook. Google Kevin, Play. tell them where else we're at. Google Play. What's, what's, like, what's it called? Brewberry or something like that? I'm not yeah, saying it right. Blueberry. It wasn't blueberry. blueberry that's cereal. The blueberry. We're on Count cereal. Chocula <laughs> boxes. We're on uh, Frankenberry. <laughs> Yummy uh, mummy. Right. Halloween time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> We're on the Lucky Charm Podcast Network. Uh, <laughs> I, I actually yeah. wouldn't mind. Be, I wouldn't mind being on a Keebler Elves podcast. That'd be cool. Yeah, That'd you just nice. like elves though in a sexual way, and it's weird. So we don't want to talk about that. Oh, come Elf on, porn. Dude. Come <laughs> on, those are respectable fellas. Hey, what about but, Sugar Bear? He's a respectable fella. Uh, uh, he's, yeah. he's about as cool as you get. But he's more the art and cereal. More importantly, <laughs> the boys are back in town. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yes, the we are. The 33 month anniversary. Apparently, I had no idea myself. That's right. So, That's right. Thanks for <laughs> thanks for joining me tonight, and and thank you to all the people out there for joining us as well. We appreciate it. And uh, real quick shout out to our uh, our new sponsor. We can be heroes. Uh, it's a comic we shop in. Can Japan, be heroes. California. So uh, check them out if you can. Not uh, owned by David people. Bowie, but but influenced. Right, by David Bowie. Exactly <laughs> influenced heavily by David Bowie. Definitely. They're fans. So that's cool. And we're cool. And I think that's going to be it for us. So thank you, everybody, for listening. Thanks for coming out. And more importantly, one day this pandemic will end, everybody. and We will be back. And maybe, just maybe, you will see us at the comic shop. You better believe it. This has been The Real Short Box. We'll see you at the comic shop. Thanks for listening. (laughs) Thank <laughs> you.